What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Campaign Grind. I am Pedro Diaz, I am your host, and this is The Campaign Grind. We got Mr. Ray Valdez here with us. How are you, man? All right, how are you, Pedro? Good, good, can't complain. Um, guys, if this is your first time checking out The Campaign Grind, Thank you very much. I guarantee you're going to find a lot of useful information, some gold nuggets you're going to be able to implement into your everyday life, into your personal life, your business, your campaign, and so on and so forth. If you're an avid listener of the Campaign Grind, you're an avid viewer of the Campaign Grind, I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. Please feel free to share this, these episodes with your friends, your family, and everybody you know. I guarantee that they're going to find some useful inf information. As always, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to give us a call, 305-860-1010, 305-860-1010. Today episode, we're going to be talking about quite a few things, all right? We're going to be talking about two important topics that I get asked about several times in every single campaign. And that first one, okay, that first one is the theme of behind enemy lines. You're probably like, what the hell are you talking about? Behind enemy lines, what do you mean? I get asked this question all the time. Should I knock on the door of somebody that has my opponent's sign? Okay, but before I give you my personal view or my personal idea, what I believe or what we tell our clients to do, I'm gonna ask Mr. Ray Valdez over here. So, Ray, when you were running for office, did you ever knock on a door that had your opponent's sign? Now, I know your opponent didn't put signs up till, till late in the game, mm -hmm. but if they would have had signs and you needed to knock on that door, would you have knocked on that door? Well, yes, of course. Uh, actually, uh, they didn't put many signs on this last campaign, Yeah. but they did do a lot of door knocking. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you knock on the door, they tell you, oh, you know. Uh, this person was already here. They were already here, yeah. or, you know, I uh, they uh, I wasn't here, and they left something on my door, and so on. But it is very important that face-to-face -face contact with every potential voter. And you de never know, uh, like they say, it is not over until the fat lady sings. It's not also the fat lady sings, it's not over till 701 election night. Exactly, and the thing is that you never know what can happen with the with the uh, uh, people on the other side, with your opponents, let's call it. And, they, and the fact is that it is very important that they, uh, the people have a choice. They, if they just meet that individual and they have that uh, individual sign on their front lawn because he just happened to, happened to be worth that block or that, or that series of houses yeah. in that neighborhood, uh, before you were there, maybe you were before them somewhere else. Yeah. And so the thing is that you know you should not be intimidated by anything. Absolutely. Even not. if they know you go to a an apartment building, and they start telling you, oh, they were here already, and so on. Knock on every door, leave something with every person you meet. Yeah. Where they say uh, door hanger, uh, a palm card, anything. You yeah. know, something so they very, remember. Very important. Something very so they important. remember. Yes. Yes. So you would knock on a door that has your opponent's sign outside. On every door. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we tell all of our clients as well. They look at us as if we're crazy, but the reality is, is exactly what Ray said. Sometimes what happens. You as a candidate haven't hit that pocket of the of the district yet. So your opponent might have hit it because they either have more money or they're starting over there. So don't get discouraged if you see a house that has your opponent's sign or your opponent's door hanger or some literature left on the door by your opponent, from your opponent. So make sure you knock on those doors, talk to those voters. Do not get discouraged. There could be several different things. It may end up being that one spouse wants to vote for that opponent, but then the other spouse isn't really feeling him or her. So you're giving them that option. Like Ray mm -hmm. said, they need to have that option. They need to know exactly who's running, what their vision are, what their platform is, and what they're gonna do once they get elected. So make sure you knock on those doors, regardless if they have a lawn sign in front of the house, if they have a door hanger or anything like that. They'd be glad to, they'd be glad to meet you. And let me tell you, a, a lot of times, the candidate not even go by himself. Yeah. You know, sometimes they have some people running around town putting signs up. Yeah. And uh, they come to that place, they put a sign up, and the uh, property owners or the voters yeah. at that location never met that candidate. Yeah. But they see the sign there, they allow it, or somebody comes and says, hey, can I put a sign for Joe on your front lawn? 
Oh yeah, go ahead. And uh, even, you know, the fact being that I've known in situations, actually right here close by, you know, uh, situations where Alex, with Alex campaign, our yeah. friend Alex, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, they, 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 they've been a sign on that property. He put a sign up across the street. This one lady individual who went, went over there and removed our friend's sign. Yeah. And he, as he was driving away, about half a block away, he looked in his rear view mirror and he saw her taking that sign down, his yeah. sign. So he went back and he knocked on her door and he talked to her. She had never met the other person, but because she saw that sign, she says, oh, you know, so he exactly. went and talked to her. The fact being, she took the opponent's sign down and put Alex's sign up. Yep. You never know what can happen. No, you don't. You, you know, and you never know what can happen with that other candidate that the day before they drop out or anything, and then they have met you. They know who you are. Exactly. They, they exactly. That, that's actually a very good point. So just because you see a lot of signs, very rarely, very rarely has the candidate himself or herself actually knocked on that door and asked the, the homeowners to put that sign. Sometimes it's a lot of campaign workers, volunteers, family members, yes. so on and so forth, that just see you getting out of the car with your groceries. Hey, can I put up a sign over here? A lot of people, you'd be yeah. surprised, you watching this, you're probably thinking to yourself, I would never allow anybody to put signs up in my mm -hmm. house unless I know who they are. But you would be surprised the amount of people that just to get you out of their hair and just to be mm -hmm. nice would say, yes, go ahead, put a sign in my house without me even knowing who that candidate is. Yeah. Sometimes so, the people are upset with incumbent. Yeah. And there may be two or three candidates running for that position. Correct. So, you know, if you're the one that gets there, meets them face to face, Put your sign up, or whichever happens. Uh, you know that's the best. You know that's the, the yep. best opportunity because they're going to vote for somebody yep. other than the incumbent. Yep, and but, that might be you. Yep, absolutely. But don't get me wrong. People will. You know, you knock on their door, they will come out and tell you, don't you see that sign out there? I'm voting for this yeah, person. Yeah. You're going to have a couple of those, but I guarantee you the large majority of people that have signs in their house are going to be open and willing to hear you out. Yeah. Hear what you're all about, hear what your campaign's about, hear what your platform is and what you're going to bring to the table once you do get elected. Yeah. So before we jump into the next topic, I do want to uh, bring this up. We actually started a new branch of Diaz Campaigns, of Diaz Consulting Group, and it's called electionmarketplace.com. We created Election Marketplace to help candidates throughout the entire U.S. nationwide with different services such as designing, printing, websites, uh, polling, tracking, phone banking, a whole bunch of services. It's all done online. It's a first of its class. Not many people are doing e-commerce, political campaign, stuff like that. Make sure you guys check it out, electionwebservices.com. We do have a 15% off the entire site right now. So if you're watching this, make sure you go to electionmarketplace.com, purchase whatever you want to purchase, and make sure at the end, before you check out, you put coupon code or coupon code or promo code SAVE15. That'll save you 15% throughout the entire site on your entire purchase. Don't forget it, electionmarketplace.com, electionmarketplace.com. One more time, electionmarketplace.com. I think I'll just go to electionmarketplace.com rather than seeing you personally because I, I didn't know about that 15% discount. No, it's save, save, the, the promo code is SAVE15. Make sure you guys check that out on electionmarketplace.com. Um, the next topic I want to talk about are the campaign necessities. This is one of the reasons why we created electionmarketplace.com. Because we're doing and we're reaching out to candidates throughout, not only here throughout the state, entire state of Florida, but throughout the entire U.S. And what we've come to realize is that a lot of candidates don't have a lot of cash. They don't have a lot of money because they're running for office in small towns, small t uh, villages, so on and so forth. So they don't raise fifty, hundred thousand dollars for their campaign. They're usually running about anywhere five hundred to five thousand dollars for their campaign. So that's why we created electionmarketplace.com to help candidates. All across the U.S., these underdog candidates that get overlooked because they don't have a lot of cash, they get overlooked because no consultant wants to spend any time there because there's no money. 
So that's why we created electionmarketplace.com so we can help candidates throughout the entire US, these underdog candidates that have their heart in the right place, that want to win, that know that have an idea of what it takes to really get elected. So if you guys have any questions, just check it out electionmarketplace.com. But the reason that we're talking about this is because my next topic is campaign necessities. Running a successful campaign on a tight budget. Okay, so a lot of people are gonna say, I need signs with my big picture, I need billboards, I need a whole bunch of things, you know, just it's basically all that fluff to kind of fill their ego. Um, so I kind of broke down to I think it's one, two, three, four, five the top five things that every single campaign should spend their money on, especially, especially if you're running a campaign on a tight budget mm -hmm. okay so I broke it down and it's basically number one if you're running a campaign on a tight budget one of the first things that you need to make sure you get and make sure it's very accurate is your walk list okay your walking list is gonna basically tell you who the voters are you're not gonna want to go out and canvas to every single voter in your town village county state whatever you don't want to do that. So you're going to be have to find a program that basically filters it for you and tells you exactly who the quality voters are. Okay? So your walk list is number 1. Okay? That's going to help you canvas once you start canvassing on 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 doors, okay? So I put it together. It's walk list, canvassing. Um, also, once you're canvassing, you need to leave handwritten notes. A lot of people overlook the handwritten notes. I'm a very big fan of that because not only did you spend money on printing a literature piece to leave at the doors, but if you leave a handwritten note, a post-it note or something like that, once the voter gets home or they see that, they can be like, you know what? This candidate actually took the time to write me a letter or write me a note. I'm going to give him a call. I'm going to give her a call and try to talk to him. What do you think about that? Um, I think that's a very good perspective. Yeah. It's a tremendous opportunity, but I, I, I want to add something. You know, you can go to a printer and you can get things printed up and so on if you think you know what you're doing. If you don't have the money to hire a, a campaign manager or strategist or your brother or, or cousin is not going to help you alone and so on. But the fact is, I have to mention this, that you have a lot of experience, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, doing political campaigns and the needs of the candidates and uh, you know I would say uh, before anything reach out to marketplace reach out to Pedro because when you go to get your printing done your signs your palm cards your door hangers and all the series of things you want to yes, you know you want to do a branding and you want to do you want to have somebody who knows what they're doing yeah doing it for you. The fact being, you know, I, you know, I can have a sign made. I can go over there to the sign maker, say, hey, make me a sign. I know, I know the care and the knowledge that it takes, because I've seen it through you, uh, to make these signs that they have the necessary impact, that they are different. Sometimes yeah. in, a, in a place there is half a dozen signs and I have but you need experience. To stand out. I have the experience that I've been where I've had a candidate of yours challenging the fact of the signs. Oh, you know, this sign that Pedro said, let Pedro do his job. You know, when we went, because I went with her, to hang signs all over the town, and we were putting signs up on the fence of the work, half a dozen, eight signs sometimes from different candidates, from different positions and everything. Your signs that you designed it for her, Those and she out. had to acknowledge that afterwards. Those were the best. That was the sign that stood out yep. on that fence out of every yep. other sign. Absolutely. And I think that this is very important that you know uh, you're going to do the work and so on, but reach out to Pedro and and get Pedro's advice yep. and and professional uh, you know experience. To get your stuff done yeah really do. you, you know what you actually motivated me what i'm gonna do all right since election marketplace is a brand new thing i'm gonna get back to running a successful campaign on a tight budget the the, the points i want to talk to you guys about but ray actually just motivated me what i want to do if you go on to electionmarketplace.com make a purchase remember use promo code save 15 and you're going to save 15 percent off your entire purchase all right you're going to send me a picture send me a copy of that receipt all right Email it to me, pager at dscampaigns.com, pager at dscampaigns.com. Forward me or send me a copy of that receipt, and I will give you a complimentary 
minute campaign discovery session with me live on the phone with you to help you and your campaign succeed. All right. So remember that go to electionmarketplace.com, purchase whatever you'd like, save 15%, use promo code save 15, send me a picture, forward me a copy. I'm going to give you a free complimentary 15 minute campaign discovery session with me on the phone to make sure your campaign is right on track. Don't so miss an opportunity. No. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do here is we talked about, like I said, running a successful campaign on a tight budget. I broke it down five different points. Walk list is number one. Okay. Under walk list, you need to make sure you canvas. You need to leave handwritten notes to make sure that the voters, once you visit them, they know who you are and it's, they don't just think it's, it's some campaign worker or volunteer just leaving that literature. Number two is phone banking. This is huge. These are necessities for your campaign. Phone banking is crucial. All right. One day if it's raining, you cannot go out and knock on doors. What do you do? You pull out your phone bank list. You start making those calls. If you don't have a consultant, if you don't have a, a, a campaign manager that sets it up for you in, in an automated system, print it out. Print it out. I remember doing it way back when, before we had all these automated systems, having to print out 30, 40, 50 sheets to make those phone calls. Do the same exact thing. Print out the list of voters, call them personally, the ones you visited, the ones you haven't visited, and the ones that you're going to visit. So they know exactly who you are. If you haven't visited them and you call them, chances are that once you knock on the door and you tell them, listen, I'm this candidate, I spoke to you on the phone a couple of days ago, they're going to open that door and they're going to invite you in, you're going to sit on that couch, and I guarantee you're going to be able to seal the deal. Number three, direct mail. Direct mail is huge. You don't necessarily have to do those big jumbo flyer pieces or anything like that. You know, if you have the money to do it, great. But what you want to make sure you do is pound as much as possible with the mail. Okay. So if you got to do half pages, you got to do four by six postcards, you got to do six by 11s, that's fine. But just make sure you have enough money to do more than just one mail piece. You want to make sure you do at least uh, uh, an intro piece, an absentee ballot piece, an early voting piece and an election day piece. So right there we're talking about four mail pieces. So whatever it is that you 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 have in that campaign account, try to budget at least four mail pieces. Like I said, they don't gotta be those big jumble pieces or anything like that. Just make sure you're consistent with it. The last thing you wanna do is drop one mailer, one huge mailer, and then election day is three, four weeks down the road and they don't hear about, they don't hear from you ever again. So make sure you budget that in Try to do what you can with the budget and make sure you're consistent with the mailers. The last and final thing, which is very inexpensive, is social media. I'm huge on social media. You already pulled that walk list. You already pulled that phone bank list. So you already have the database of the voters that you're going to be targeting this election. It's very simple. Jump on YouTube. Find out how to target actual voters on Facebook. Okay, Jump on YouTube. Find out how to target voters on Facebook. The reason I tell you to do it that way is because a lot of companies, what they do, they jump on Facebook, they create a post, they boost that post, and then they do a radius, you know, five mile radius from their area. The problem with that when you're running for office, and especially when you have a tight budget, is that you're going to be spending about 25 to 37 cents per impression on somebody that may not necessarily vote in your election. Because a lot of candidates, a lot of uh, voters only vote for president in presidential elections, gubernatorial elections, and very rarely do voters ever vote in small municipal town village elections. So you want to make sure that you target the right audience once you're spending that money on social media. Okay, Save yourself that cash. So get the voter files, dump it into social media, micro target who you're targeting with social media ads. So like that, the voters that you're knocking on, the voters that you're calling, the voters that you're, that you're direct mailing, and the voters that you're targeting through social media are all getting hit constantly. They're getting phone calls, they're getting stuff on the door, they're getting stuff in the mailbox, and they're also seeing you when they open up Facebook on their phone. So those are the top five things. Running a successful campaign on a, bu on a tight budget, I would focus on these five things one more time. Walk list, that is crucial. Once you're canvassing, make sure you guys leave handwritten notes so the voters know exactly who you are, that they know it's not just a volunteer leaving literature or anything like that. Phone bank, okay? Pull that list yourself, sit down if it's a rainy day, you're having lunch, you're on your way to work, you're stuck in traffic, call these voters personally. I guarantee it's going to leave a lasting impression. Direct mail, okay? Direct mail is huge, okay? You need to make sure that you budget at least four mailers, intro, 
AB, early voting, and election day. <clears throat> the last and final one is social media. Social media is huge, it's very inexpensive, and if you have the data, you can micro-target the people that you're going after for this particular election. Don't spend excess money if you don't need to, okay? So, with all that being said and done, Ray, you got anything else to add to that? No, I just, uh, you know, think that uh, it is very important that they be ready to talk to the people and uh, they don't just, you know, go there uh, without being really prepared to answer questions yeah. and, and, and talk to the, uh, their uh, constituents. And uh, the, something that is invaluable, it's just incredible, is the, uh, how much, how much uh, people that see you at their front door appreciate it. Oh yeah. <clears throat> to show up at a, at a voter's front door and meet them face to face, uh, that can make such a big difference a huge in your difference. campaign. You know, it is very important. Yeah, it's a huge difference. Especially if you're running a campaign and you have you don't have that much cash, you got to put in that sweat equity, okay? Because a lot of candidates that have a lot of cash in their campaign account, guess what? They just rely on the fancy, glossy mailers. They're going to send that out. They're just going to sit home, do their nails, do their hair, relax, not do much, not campaign hard. But if you really want to get elected and you got that fire in your belly, you got to go out there, you got to hustle, you got to grind, you got to do whatever it takes to make sure you get elected. So knocking on those doors, I guarantee you, it sounds like everybody does it. Everybody running for office knocks on doors. I guarantee you, I've been doing this for, the, for a very long time. I've been helping candidates since 2009, so we're running almost, we're nine years, running on 10 next year. So we've been here for a very long time, and I'm telling you, candidates do not like to canvas. If you want to get elected, put in that sweat equity, get shit done, and make it happen, okay? So anything else? No. All right. Very so good. So as always, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to give me a call, 305-860. 1010 I'm sorry about that. Shoot me an email, pager at DSCampaigns.com, pager at DSCampaigns.com. Stalk me on all social media platforms at Campaign Mentor. All social media platforms at Campaign Mentor. And like I said, make sure you guys check out electionmarketplace.com, electionmarketplace.com, electionmarketplace.com. Use promo code SAVE15. If you guys purchase anything now, between for the next 48 hours send me over a picture of the receipt of what you purchased or email it to me at pedro at dscampaigns.com and i will give you a complimentary 15 minute campaign discovery session with me live on the phone to make sure your campaign is right on track so once again thank you guys very much for checking for tuning into this week's episode of the campaign grind i am pedro diaz he is ray valdez mr ray valdez thank you guys very much thank pedro you. diaz signing out